Harry comment, the victim is lying on his back. No visible signs of violence. Superficial wound on the right thigh. Blood analysis suggests it could be post-mortem. Probably a scratch that occurred when the body was being moved. The blood report indicates an advanced and long-lasting state of exhaustion. His face is covered with mud, like the other victims. Ari comment, sample of no interest, comes to one of the policemen present on the wasteland. Some orchid pollen. The concentration of pollen in the air is quickly decreasing because of the rain, but it gets higher in the direction of the body. A small origami figure in the right hand. Fingers were probably closed after the time of death. The victim is Jeremy Bowles, declared missing five days ago. See reference file. An orchid was placed on the victim's chest. Strange character, that Blake. Didn't seem too pleased to see me. Orchid pollen. Something the killer couldn't control. Can it be traced back to its source? The body got scratched when it was moved. There may be more traces of blood around here. There's a railroad track near where the body was left. Same as all the other victims. Way too many people here. They're trampling all over the crime scene. Impressive. Seem very common. The pollen particles disappear in the tall grass. It's probably the end of the trail. I'm heading back to the office. You staying? Yeah, I'm gonna have another look around if you don't mind. Take all the time you want.
a bat. A wolf's head. A crab. Death. Death. I have the results of your MRI scans. Everything seems to be normal. There is no physical damage from the accident. However, I am worried about your psychological condition. I know it's not easy, but you've got to start over, Ethan. You're not responsible for what happened. It's my fault Jason is dead. He'd still be alive if I'd been looking out for him. It was an accident. Accidents happen every day. You can't blame yourself forever for your son's death. How is Sean? He's a very solitary kid, you know, very focused within himself. He's really close to his mother. With me, he's more distant. And what about you, Ethan? What do you feel? I no longer want to live. I have no reason to continue. Not even for your son, Sean. I couldn't save Jason. Sean doesn't need a father like me. Is there something else you wanted to tell me, Ethan? I sometimes have these blackouts. Times when I don't know what I'm doing. I recover consciousness sometime later. But I'm someplace else. And I have no idea how I got there. Do you think this could be related to the accident? You suffered a massive concussion and were in a coma for six months. We really don't know what effect a shock like that can have on the brain. That's the end of this session. Uh, we'll continue this conversation next week. You were lucky, Ethan. It's very rare to survive such a traumatic accident. I don't exactly feel lucky, Doctor. You want to eat something? How did things go at school today? The teacher yelled at me for being late again. She's gonna send me home the next time it happens. I'm sorry about that, Sean. Next time, we'll really pull it together, okay? Is something the matter, Sean? No, I'm all right. Aren't you going to go play with the other kids? I don't feel like it. I haven't been on a seesaw in a long time. What do you think? Yeah! Come on, Dad, make me fly!
<laughs> what about that merry-go-round? I bet I can push you so fast you won't be able to stay on it. Great! <laughs> Whoa, I think my head is spinning. <laughs> Good training for astronauts, though. <laughs> I'd like a packet of strawberry flavored chewies, please. Thanks. Hey, I got you some chewies. I hate strawberry. Thanks. It was nice of you anyway. Looks like rain's coming. I think we better go. Okay. You know, sometimes I remember before, I mean, when Jason was still here, sometimes I wish everything could just be the way it was before. Me too, Sean. Me too. Hey, Dad, can I have a ride on the carousel? Can I? Sure. Go pick a horse and get on. I'll get a ticket. One, please. That's a dollar. <laughs> 